Well, good afternoon, everyone. Cynthia Tomain here with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining today's webinar on projecting price paths for high probability FX trade entries. Now, before we get into the meat of today's discussion, we actually have David Gibbs on the on the line with us to go over just a few items here on the CME FX products. So, David, if you give us a brief introduction, and by the way, David is um, one of our presenters for the School of Futures. Now, each of these have been monthly events so far this year. David's been gracious enough to talk to us about um, the School of Futures and introducing several of the different product groups. Now, he did a webinar just a couple of weeks ago on the FX products, so if you're interested more on these products that are available, I'll also be pointing you out to our archives so that you can listen to David's previous presentation. But right now, let me let David uh, discuss a little bit about or just introduce the FX products available for trading through the CME group. So David, uh, if you take it away, um, I've got the slides and it's just let me know and I'll go ahead and advance them for you. Thank so you. thanks, David, for joining us. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, happy to be here this morning and looking forward to Tim's presentation on pricing and price trading of the FX components here at the CME Group. Uh, the CME Group is the world's largest and mo most diverse futures exchange, and one of our core or constituent marketplaces is the foreign exchange or FX area, which was introduced by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange back in 1972 and was the first financial futures contract. Uh, it has developed uh, obviously a lot since then and, and with the uh, advent of electronic trading and electronic access to the marketplace has grown even more significantly since the early 2000s. We're very pleased at the CME Group to host uh, several currency pairs for trading uh, and I know that Tim is going to cover some of those with you this morning. Um, we are also in the process of developing a lot of the emerging economy currencies. Uh, one of our fastest growing currency pairs at the CME Group is, for example, the Mexican peso. Uh, we've also got a recently launched Brazilian real contract and are developing uh, a very uh, what is going to become a very competitive offshore market with the uh, Chinese renminbi offshore contract, which is scheduled to be launched in the fourth quarter of this year. So stay tuned and, and uh, visit our website at cmegroup.com for uh, continual updates uh, on the developments of this very, very global, international, and exciting marketplace. Uh, Cynthia, if you'll move to the next slide, the pie chart shows uh, examples of, based on average daily volume, our largest currency pairs here at CME Group, and you'll notice that the Euro FX is our largest, followed by the Australian dollar, which as a result of the tremendous trade between Australia and China has become what is now being referred to as a very solid and strong cur uh, commodity currency. Uh, this is a very, very exciting contract to trade and offers a real good depth of liquidity as well as open interest alongside the standard uh, sterling pound, Canadian dollar, and Japanese yen futures. Uh, it should be also noted that our standard contracts also trade uh, with a smaller version known as the E-minis and E-micros uh, for smaller trading sizes. Uh, we talked about that two weeks ago in the, in the FX webinar. And then the last slide, that I'd like to draw your attention to is our education center at CME.com and, and that's accessible by going to our website uh, cmegroup.com backslash education where you can find all kinds of additional online tools as well as webinars, some uh, archive videos as well as white papers on not just the foreign exchange or FX uh, complex but all of the complexes we trade at CME Group. Uh, interest rates, equity index products, agricultural commodities, energies and metals as well. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Tim Morse, who's going to be speaking about price projections in the FX complex. Tim is a CTA and also president of Blackthorn Capital. And I know he's going to give you some tremendously relevant information. Tim, good luck and uh, thanks for, for being here today.
Tim, I'm going to unmute your phone. I'm not seeing your phone. I see your phone is still muted. So if you've already started talking, just be aware you're unmuted now. Cynthia, I am frozen again. I don't know if it's, it is snowing here in Prescott, but I don't know if it's the weather or what. So give me a minute here and let me see if I can fix the problem real quick. All going. I'm doing well here. Thank you, everybody. Uh, apologize again for uh, the late start. Um, sometimes technology gets the best of us, apparently. Um, let's take a look here. We are going to do, I've got to go backwards, we're going to project price paths for high probability FX trade entries. And actually, I'm going to simplify it um, just a little bit this morning. Um, uh, Shane and I, my partner, and I took a look at uh, the original idea about a week ago. Let me take some warm tea and see if it helps my throat. And um, I decided uh, to go back and see if we could clarify some of the principles that we've talked about in the last six months that some of you some of you uh, may not uh, may not have understood what we were talking about, or I may have, may not have made it clear. So um, currencies are my home turf, so to speak, um, as Barbara mentioned when she did the presentation last month. And uh, this is a good opportunity. For, you know, I'm very comfortable here. Um, although I trade everything that we talk about, um, it's a great opportunity for me to go back and clarify some of the smaller, uh, more interesting points. So that's what we'll try to do today. Um, again, I'm the, I'm the founder and head of Market Geometry, and um, with, along with my partner Shane Blankenship, um, we, are, we are proud. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to be a longtime member of the CME and have a, a longstanding relationship with Cynthia, who does such a great job of education and, education and of course, uh, interactive brokers. Um, we always have to do a disclaimer. Cynthia did hers, the CME did theirs. Of course, I'm obligated to do mine as well. Um, you can read through mine while I do mine because it's very quick. Um, this is what I think about disclaimers. There's no holy grail. I don't have it. If you came looking for it, if you find it, please drop me an email. I don't think it exists. Hard work, good education, um, learn to master yourself. Those are the important things uh, as far as I'm concerned. And I would point out one last thing. This is one person's experience, and your experience may differ. And you should always remember that when you watch presentations from anybody um, in anything in life, but especially when we're talking about money. Money makes the world go round, unfortunately, but it is the truth. And uh, the last thing you want to do is waste your money on somebody else's um, ideas unless you test them to yourself. Um, I'm going to do something a little interesting. I think normally I uh, give my uh, my props to the people that have taught me, people like Amos Hostetler, the founder of Commodities Corporation, um, Dr. Alan Andrews, one of my early mentors, um, and some of the other people that have helped me in the past, uh, everybody from Milton Friedman, uh, Dr. Burl Sprinkle, um, and, and, and on and on. You can go back and see in the past seminars the people that, that I have worked with that have taught me in the past. But um, today I want to give my... Uh, my thanks, all my thanks, to my partner, Shane Blankenship. And this week especially, um, he's gone out of his way to help me. Um, I needed to spend some time with my family and get in touch. There's some personal things uh, that I need to do in a couple weeks. Um, those of you at Market Jam, you know what's going on. Um, and it's important for me, though, to keep my obligation with Interactive Brokers. This is very important to my life. I really appreciate uh, the education uh, opportunities that Cynthia gives me here. Um, but I couldn't do any of this without Shane. And I waited 40 years before I ever took a partner on and uh, I'll tell you, uh, Shane was uh, a student of mine for a long time, um, and um, I've had everybody from CTA uh, students, everybody from CTA managers and hedge fund managers that manage tens of billions of dollars, all the way down to people that are just starting out. I've never had anybody that works as hard as Shane did when he was first um, as a student, then when he's in mentoring, and as my partner now, he's redoubled his efforts. And uh, I couldn't do half of what I do here or anywhere else without Shane. And I, I truly appreciate it. Plus, he's a magnificent chartist, um, and he knows uh, knows the markets inside and out. He's a full-time professional trader. And uh, I can vouch. Let me just tell you, it's hard for me to keep up with him. He's absolutely magnificent. We're going to talk about Euro FX futures. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, normally I talk about... Uh, things a little bit off the beaten path when I talk about currency futures because everybody knows about the Euro FX futures. So I'll talk about Canada or Australia or something else, maybe some crosses. But today I thought we'd talk about Euro FX futures and uh, take a look at some of the concepts that I've talked about in the last six months and see if we can maybe highlight them in uh, some, some very easy, 
straightforward trades, trades that you should be able to uh, understand and uh, and take right into your trading. Um, before we get to that, I just I wanted to thank people that have been sending and we've been giving homework, and I'll give a little piece today. And uh, I wanted to thank all the people who have been giving in homework. For those of you that have been following along in the open positions, we closed out our oil, which we got we went long at 78 and made a couple small in and out trades in the meantime on half the positions. We closed out the balance of our oil. Uh, for those of you that aren't at market geometry, uh, we did a live at $98.20, which is nice. It's all about 10, 10 bucks, about uh, two or three hours after we closed out the position. Um, we also got rid of uh, the rest of our soybean position, our uh, Novi soybeans. We got it out at about average of about 17.20 um, after getting along at 11.18, so that was a beautiful trade. Uh, at the moment, because I have some personal stuff in about a week, you know, my personal beliefs are when you have business to take care of, go flat. So it's nice to be flat. I can clear my head. We can enjoy a uh, nice presentation today. So if you're, if you're doing homework, see if you can figure out how I exited and why I exited on those two positions. You can go back in the prior um, webinars and take a look and see how we got in um, and follow along what, what, how we updated them and uh, see if you can figure out why those areas were important to me and why we put our profit targets there. So let's, uh, let's talk about Euro FX features and we're going to look at some very simple but really powerful uh, techniques that I use when I trade the markets as well as some things from behind the scenes that most of you, I'd say probably none of you, um, will ever see live, um, but it greatly impacts your trading. And if you can visualize what's going on as we go through this, if, I, if I'm able to bring it out of you, um, it'll make a huge difference in your trading. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, somebody uh, from India, actually, hi, I'm on Horia is worried that I'm not going to cover uh, the original material. No, not at all. I am going to cover the original material. Don't worry. Um, I'm just going to uh, also bring in some other concepts, which uh, we've talked about in the past uh, six seminars that I think, and I'm going to do uh, just, uh, just some brief visuals, actually, that my 12-year-old uh, daughter put together for us that I think will make a huge difference for you. That's all. So don't get worried. Now, in terms of questions, please hold your questions to the end, because otherwise I'll keep scanning over there for questions, and uh, I'll actually get lost. So, And we're already a little late. Again, I apologize, you guys, uh, to all of you for uh, being patient. I know, especially Cynthia, thank you very much. I know uh, both David and I gave you a heart attack, but we're good. We're here. It'll be fine. All right, so this is a 60-minute Euro FX futures chart, and this is 24 hours. This is not day only. And... When we sit down and trade, either myself or my partner Shane, and most of the people that I've mentored, um, this is what you do. You don't want too much data. You want a significant event on the left-hand side of your chart. You want enough data that you can work with. This would be the morning. Enough data that you can work with or you're getting ready for the morning. And I love, I love to leave a blank white space over here. So, for example, if you're using Ensign, uh, you right-click and on properties. Instead, it normally leaves about 24 pixels. I put 500. I like to leave a nice big fat white space over here, and the reason why is two things. It'll let me it'll let me project price and time over here, uh, and I can see in my mind's eye. Okay, look, price is going to have its work its way all the way over here to get where I'm interested. Or it also reminds me that I'm working on history, and what I'm about to trade hasn't really happened yet. So. It's very important for us to relax and get set up long before we're ready to trade. And I typically spend hour, hour and a half, even on those days when I when I uh, I don't just portfolio trade. I, I have the luxury two days a week at least of uh, intraday trading. On those days when I intraday trade, I take an hour, an hour and a half to get ready, uh, looking for things uh, that are interesting for me. So I'll spend a good hour on a chart that I find interesting before I'm even ready to trade. So I'll start with a chart like this, and uh, I think you should start with a chart like this. And let, let's see, I'll show you what I think is important. So we're going to begin to build what we call a map or a market map. Now, the most important thing, to a lot of you, this may seem basic. And you'll do it uh, one or two times. But those of you that are in ment private mentoring with uh, myself and Shane know that we make you do this hundreds and hundreds of times a month, and we do it every time we open a chart because it'll get you in the rhythm of the market and it'll also make you look for the important things on a chart. Just mark out the swing lows and then a swing high. So this is the first low 
and you can see the high here. And this swing low actually becomes a low when this high, when price breaks above this high. That makes this a swing low. This isn't a swing high yet because you don't know how high it's going to go. It becomes a swing high when price pulls up, leaves a low. If this low doesn't get penetrated, when this high gets taken out, it confirms this low and this high. Now we'll have to decide here. When we leave a new swing low, it'll have to reconfirm everything. So it takes a swing low and a swing high, then a swing high getting taken out to for a swing low, it's kind of a back and forth wave motion. And the only way you're going to understand this is to do it yourself when you do the charts. Now, it's important that you understand it's not the number of bars in between. I know there's books out there that tell you it's four bars or it's this or it's that. All of that stuff's just baloney, okay? Those are made up rules, and if you do the back testing, if you do the, and I don't mean by computer, although you can do it by computer, if you just do enough charts, you'll realize that these are just signposts and you want something that's reliable they should be a little loose and it'll depend on the currency you don't want to use too much data so in six this is 60 minutes and you can see we've got you know four or five days stuck in here don't do 30 days of data you're wasting your time and you're looking at irrelevant major events to the left we want just enough a major low or a major high or maybe maybe a major quick swing right here that's all we need to work with if we get too much We'll be looking for too big of a slice to take out of this market, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So we need to frame how much data, how much data we're looking at, how many bars we're looking at relative to the time frame. So if I'm looking at 20 minutes, for example, I might only look at two days, three days. If I'm looking at 60 minutes, I might look at four or five days. If I'm looking at daily, so I'm looking at more. All right, excuse me. So. If you want to know what the swings look like, here's another way to do it. You can just draw in. We have a high over here, and we're coming down, and we're making a low. And you can see I'm going to call these. They're not exact double lows. I'm going to call these the same low. That's why I marked only one swing low. They're not different enough for me to even bother. So, But you can see I marked in the intermediate little small swing here. We came down. We made a low. We made a high. We made a low. I'm going to call these the same. Then we came and took this high out, which made this a low. Then we came down and made a low. We took this high out. Now we've marked this swing high and this swing low as confirmed. Now we're making new highs, new lows. You can connect them this way. Why is this important? One of the really interesting things to do is to draw a lot of these, and especially if you can then take the picture, for example, on Ensign, if you hit the B button, it takes the bars off. Now you're left to swings. The noise is out of the way. Now why is that important? Well, we can just get a better feel for the market. This will help you in your swing work. And you can see now, here's our significant lows. We left a shelf. We took it out and made a high. Where did we pull back to? Right back to the shelf. Came up, made a new high. Now we weren't able to pull to the shelf. Now we're heading higher. Now notice I marked this with a question mark. Why? I don't know if this is a swing high. I don't know what this is yet. I know that we're heading higher. Is this it? Are we going to head higher? Is this it? Are we going to head lower and take out the swing low? I have no idea. So I don't mark this as a swing high. I assume this is a swing low, but it's not confirmed yet. But I certainly don't know that this is a swing high yet. Just relax. Let the market tell you where it's going. That's really our thought process through everything about uh, trading. Trading is a process. Relax and let price tell you where it's going. Let's see. So just about the time we think the market may be topping out, we come in on Sunday night, and of course we get a wide range bar, and it's almost the widest, the largest range bar. We've got a wide range bar here, and another one here, and maybe one stuck in here, but it's about as large as everything else on the board. Wide range bar on Sunday night, Closes higher, opens higher, closes on its high. So they definitely need to buy them. So if you thought this was a high, is it a significant high? Well, not when this bar prints, opens, and keeps going. Now, I'll throw this in as an afterthought, and those of you trying to do advanced work, just remember this. Dr. Andrews taught that pivots have a low and a high, swing high to swing low buried in there. So if you needed to use that for drawing, you could, of course, use that. And 
Sometimes these are significant areas in terms of support and resistance when we do balance lines or multi-pivot lines. But in terms of this high being a significant high, because price kept right on going with no pullback, this high is more important to this high. Is this the end? I have no idea. I wouldn't mark it that way, and I wouldn't think about it that way because we don't know what price is going to do. It's closing on its high. We'll have to wait for another bar, buy another bar. But I'll keep marking swing highs and swing lows. As I try and get a feel for this market right now, I have nothing to do. Okay? Let's let a little bit unfold. Take some time. Pull back from your... I know you're all scrunched in looking at the, at the monitor very closely. Pull back two or three feet. Take a deep breath. And take a look at the markets. See what you see. And I'll tell you what I see. So price stair-stepped higher. We got a gap higher. Closed on its high. Ran it a bit higher. Closed near its lows. Ran it lower. Didn't quite fill the gap. Interesting. Ran it higher. Now this swing's job, since we didn't fill the gap, of course, is to take out this swing high. But we failed, so this is what we call a swing failure. Tells you something about this market. It actually tells you that this market is weak. And when we come and take out this low, you can see we do it with grand fashion. We blow right through this gap. So those of you that think gaps are immediate support or resistance, you know, it's really noise. It's really it's meaningless. Now they are interesting markers for later on, and you'll see that in a few moments. But where do we where are we going? I marked this out as a swing low because it spawned this move higher. And once we took out this low, I marked this as a swing high. This is written wrong. It should say swing high, pardon me. So when you get your slides, just cross that out and put swing high and put my name next to it. That's my mistake. Now we trade lower and we take out even this swing low. Is this the low? Well, we headed a little bit higher, but not enough for me to decide that this is a swing low. I don't know. I need some confirmation. So I'll put a question mark by it. I don't know. Let's a little, little more time go on. I'll give you another 10 seconds or so. Take a look. See what you can see. Take a look and see if you can see what I marked, why I marked it, and if you'd mark it the same way yourself. Also, do you see anything significant going on? So here's what I saw. We stair-stepped higher, and we gapped a bit higher. We made a significant high. We pulled back, couldn't fill the gap. Tried to make a new high, could not. That was a swing failure. Caused a significant sell-off stopped, began to move higher, here's our swing low, this is not a swing low because you can see there's no swing high to confirm it, so this is the low and we're still just continually moving higher, we finally leave a high and all I did is pull over my, private, my prior high, we're heading lower Will this be a swing high? And I put a retest to the swing high because really it's the same swing high. Price got up here and ran into sellers. And the question now is, where are we headed? So keep that in the back of your mind. But what happens? You can see my question mark. Price sticks right at the low of the gap and now this has become a multi-pivot line. Why? Or a line of balance. Here's our lower high of the gap depending on how you want to say it. It's even relatively close to this pullback. Now we've got a number of lows in this area and we just run price through it and I really like that it really there's two things here that catch my eye and maybe your eye is not attuned to it. This line, this line of balance, the reason why this is a line of balance, look at this wide range bar when price just gives up to the downside. This cuts right through the downside action. Cuts right into this single bar that stands out. And this bar really is a gap, just like this is a gap. 
This is price just accelerating through. If we had had a, a, a weekend, this would be a wide open gap. And similarly over here, we're just blasting higher and price cuts right through this bar. So price zooms through this bar on the downside. Now it zooms through, sorry, zooms through this multi-pivot line to the downside. Now it zooms through to the upside. And that's why I really like this line. Then we come and make similar highs. And when we pull back, we pull right to this line. Tap, 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 tap. You can see them try and sell. Even here, it's a couple pips off but they're trying to sell, and they finally have to give it up. Now the question is, again, this swing's job is to take out the major high. That's its job in life. Everybody has a job in life. That's its special purpose. So take a look, and what do we have here? You're setting up. It's time to trade. It's how about this? It's not time to trade. It's only time to trade when you're ready. It's time for you to pay attention. You're doing your trading map, your market map. So the back of your mind, before I go forward, you should be saying to yourself, what exactly do I have here? What's set up in front of me? Is there anything going on that I understand? Even if it's too much, forget about the trade. What's the flow of the market? What's the phase of this market? Is this an uptrend, a downtrend, a range? Is there something I should be drawing? Do you like the balance line? Would you never have drawn that in? What does this gap mean to you, including nothing? How about these prior highs? Those are all things that you should be looking at in this chart and thinking about. Now, a lot of you know I teach fifth graders and uh, going very well again this year. We've got over 25,000 fifth graders in the program this year. Um, and they're just they're just pounding the stock market. They're, I'm always amazed. Uh, once you get them, you get them you know, give them a little bit of information, wind them up and get them going. And they're just absolutely doing a magnificent job. And they averaged, uh, in their four months of trading, they averaged un, un, uh, unannualized 14% last year. Um, it's just magnificent. And uh, our sponsor last year, by the way, now that he's passed away, a good friend of mine, Steve Jobs, uh, and I want to thank him, and uh, the Steve Jobs Foundation for the rest of this year is also continuing to pick up the funding for this program. And, I, and of course, we really appreciate it. So let's just take a look at, at what I would teach fifth graders if they were here today. And, and we do it, uh, by the way, with WebEx, uh, very much in, in, a top, in, a, in a forum very much like this. Some of them watch it recorded. Some of them watch it live. It depends on their school schedule. So this is our line of force. Um, it's not a bad center line for those of you a little more advanced and know a little bit about action reaction lines. And here's how I got it. I grabbed this high. Let's let's look at there you go. This high and the next high. So the first high and the first pull back up. That's the line of maximum excursion. High, pull back, high. First First swing, second swing. Project it forward. That gives me the line of maximum excursion. I just grab it and drag it through. And as I get through the center, so it cuts through the center of this action, you can see that it's a beautiful line of force. It cuts right through the action all the way up. And even as we started to wander a little bit away, the gap pulled price right back into this line of force. So that's where the line of force was at that moment. Now, Fifth graders learn about mountains and valleys. We want to keep it real simple. We don't draw slope lines at all. We just draw simple horizontal lines. We draw little blobby shapes. We call them mountains and valleys. And here, this would be a mountain right here, for example. And there's a tiny mountain right there. There's a valley. Now, they can't go short, so of course they're not trading valleys. They can only trade stocks on the long side. That's what the program allows them. But we want to know when we draw, they're allowed to draw valleys, just to do analysis. Are the mountains holding or are the valleys holding? And so that's one way to do the analysis. And here you can see, here's a mountain here, the mountain's holding. The valley is getting broken up above. Here's a mountain. The valley got broken up above. Here's another mountain. The base holds. The valley gets broken. 
there's another mountain. It holds. The valley gets broken. Similarly. Maybe it's confusing. Draw a few out. It's pretty easy to do. The fifth graders can do it. Well, I shouldn't say that. These fifth graders are pretty smart, but it's pretty easy once you draw them out. That's one way to look at it. And the reason we do this is you ask yourself, uptrend, downtrend, or range? Take a look. See what you think. No, there's no right answer here. There's only your answer. How about that? Because nobody else knows what time frame you're going to be trading in, what's important to you, what your eyes see, what your risk reward is, how much money you're willing to risk, what your profit target is. All those things come into play. What your slice is, which is related to risk reward and time frame. All those things come into play when we answer this question right here. So, I'm going to ask you rhetorical questions. You can type in answers if you want. It doesn't matter. I've got double tops, which a lot of people like, but more importantly, they're below the significant high. So it formed a significant high, came back down, then tried to take out the high, and so far have failed. So don't I see sellers here? Doesn't it seem like there's sellers here? It does to me. Okay. Similar on the downside. Price came down, and I understand we busted through down here, but let's take a look. After the zoom through, now we've zoomed back above. Now we're tap, 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 tapping. Uh, doesn't it seem like there might be some buyers here as well? No? Okay. Just look at it. Give me a couple more seconds. By the way, welcome to my friends in Romania and Russia. Some people in Australia, we have people all over the place here today. Cynthia, you do a good job of grabbing them. I appreciate it. Volume would help. No, volume is not going to help us, Wayne. We don't need volume. We need simple bars. Okay. So, Ted says yes to both. Okay. We don't need candlesticks, we don't bars. Nothing wrong with that. We don't need volume analysis, even any of those things. You can get do that if you want, but we're gonna keep this real simple. I hell I'm barely I'm barely even drawn. How about that? Okay. A lot of people suggest different drawing techniques, so they're they range up, down, range. That's fine. All right, let's take a look. Let's go through a couple of simple principles. Ah. Let me give you a surprise. Don't I see sellers here? Don't I see buyers here? Everybody says, a lot of people saying I agree range. All right, Sean, how about this? Let me pop this bar on you. How's your range feeling? We came, moved out of the range hard. Now, the good news, Sean, is Ah, uh, Matt. Matt says whale well, alert. Well, we'll see. Look where we closed. Right back in the range. Sean, good eyes. False break, maybe. We'll see. So, for those of you that don't know, we call this a wash and rinse. And this term comes all the way back from the early 1980s, um, when I first actually got tagged with the name whale from a good friend of mine at the uh, bank, Bumi Putra, Central Bank of Malaysia. A guy named Boom Boom, and unfortunately Boom Boom is not with us, but his spirit is. And Boom Boom first said, you know, you're you're not a guppy. You're not a shark. You're a whale. And he didn't meet a big fat boy. Yeah, we ran the, the whale, ran the stops, and then dragged people right back in. Shake and bake, sure, Wayne. So let's see if we can give people a little idea about what this means. Let's try to make this concept more clear. This is something we talked about. Um, maybe on the surface in the last three or four months. That's something we do um, more in detail in seminars that we give at Market Geometry. But I don't think we've done this here. Let's take a look. If you think about multi-pivot lines or any structure like that, where you can actually identify major buyers or sellers, think of them like doors. Does this look, let me see if my art's okay. My, my daughter, again, my daughter helped me. Does this look like a door to you? 
She'd do a good job. She'll give us an extra allowance. My drawing's not very good, but <clears throat> anyway. So I elicited her help. I said, I said, uh, Lucy, I need a door. So here's our door, and we're at the same multi-pivot line. Let me go back and show you. So we're at this multi-pivot line, this balance line right here. Okay. So think of it like a door. And Price, just like you, wants to know behind, what's behind the door. Price is up here. Now, if you're either outside a house or inside the house, and you're at a door, it's a solid door, and you hear something going on behind the door, of course you want to know what's behind the door. Is it a good time? Is it a party? Is it burglars? What the heck is it? We just don't know. I see one of, one of my buddies from uh, the Coral Gables group, Dr. Andrews, in our circles here. I'll say, glad to see you. So what's behind the door? You need to know. You must know. You're very curious. you got to go through the door to know what's really behind it. You can't just peek. You can't listen to the door. You can't look underneath. You can't open it an inch and look. It doesn't work because you don't really know. People, people might be hiding back here. What is behind the door? There's only one. No, you got to go through the door. You got to step up and go through the door. Somebody's got to do it. So let's take a look. Price opens the door and goes through. You got to go through the door to know what's really behind it. So this is a balance line. And here you can see we are banging, banging, banging on it. Price goes through the door and takes a look. Now, sometimes there's nothing behind the door. If there are no whales or no buyers sitting here and we run stops through this area what happens all this all the sell stops get triggered and the people that want to sell breakout lows get short and the volume of sellers overwhelms anybody that's willing to buy of course we get these wide range bars lower and we head quite a bit lower we've got to open the door to find out what's there if there are no whales or no significant orders here, this is what happens. It plunges. But unless we open the door, we have no idea. Sometimes you open the door and you find nothing but clear running space, and this is what you get. Triple Lucy's allowance. Okay. Now, sometimes there be whales. You open the door. Everybody rushes through, the stops get run, the breakout sellers get short, and standing over to the side is a nice big fat whale. Somebody like me that's willing to do 20 or $30 billion. Run the stops, then step up, and we call this eating the minnows, right into the mouth of the whales, and we chase them out the other side. And pretty soon, you want it to be long, you got stopped out of your position. Some of you got stopped to short. Now we're up here. Yeah, the whales are buying wholesale. Do the whales cause the door to be open? Hey, we're going to talk about that in a second. Good. Gina's ahead of me. Good job. Look, whales have got to make money. You can't sit, you know, if you're managing 20, 30, 40, 50 billion dollars, you cannot sit here when it's your time to trade and not make money. So if you know there are significant stop loss orders, so you can feel it in the market. If you've been trading as long as I have, you don't need to see the book. You can feel it. You can feel the stops build up. You can see the buy orders underneath. It's, it's easy, okay? Are you wrong sometimes? Sure. There are times in life where you're always wrong, but you gotta open the door to find out. And if you're right, the payoff is incredible. If you wanna get long, sometimes the only way you can do it is exactly what Gina said. Sometimes you gotta run the stops to do what you need to do. Can the small fishies eat the big whale? Not very often. Generally, a whale like this, even somebody like me, we're bigger than the central banks. Oh, no. For example, on a big day in Japan, think about it. The Bank of Japan, they're supposed to be the biggest and baddest central bank in their time zone. On a big day, their big, 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 big day, they'll do $6 billion. That's nothing. That's nothing. That's small change for me. In foreign exchange, 
four trillion. Reggie wants to know, does it take 20 to 30 billion to move price up or down? Well, it depends on the day. It depends on what kind of orders are down here. If I can, for example, move it down and run the stops, and I know that there are significant buy orders down here, and if you think we don't talk to each other, you're kidding yourself. If I know there are significant buy orders down here, it doesn't take very much money at all. Get people short, buy with both hands, and the rest of the whales will step up, be like a whale pack. It's not that hard. Other days, if you're doing it yourself, yeah, sometimes you have to wrestle it to the ground. And sometimes, Reggie, you can't wrestle it to the ground. <laughs> you know, and that's a bad day. So Hester says, now I know who runs my stops. Some days, yeah, sure. And, you know, sometimes in market geometry, I have people that ask me. And, you know, we, we can't tell you exactly what we're doing live. That would be illegal. Um, we don't want to front run things. But we can show you afterwards, hey, this is what I was doing. This is what I was thinking exactly. Can the whale get the volume at the right price, or are they chasing and stepping over each other? Well, you'll you'll watch this, Peter. Depends on how good you are. There are whales, and then there are whales that have been around a long time. The better you are, the more adept you are, the better you are at your craft. And let let me stop right here and just tell you, just because I'm telling you about significant players, including myself, that have tools that are not available to you. It doesn't mean that you should be concerned because you're a one-lot trader or a two-lot trader. Because, first of all, with a little practice, and people in market geometry know this, the reason I'm showing this, with a little practice, it's pretty easy to see what we're doing, what the whales are doing. And if you can see what we're doing, if you take a little time to think it through, you can swim right along with us. And when we get harpooned, by the way, you can really ride it because when one of us goes down, it's a big move. And you can ride, you know, those failures are, you know, hundreds and hundreds of points. Minnows don't need to move weight. That's true. So if you're adept and you can watch the tracks, it's all good for you, okay? So so don't feel overwhelmed like, oh, my God, there's no hope for me. No, the answer is if you can read the market, if you take the time to learn this, read the market, it really can help your trading quite a bit. So, no. No, you can't blame me for your stops. You can't blame me for your stops. Look, sometimes I get them too. All right, so let's take a look. Price comes down, find significant buyers, in this case a big whale. Now, there may be buy orders as well, but this whale, for whatever reason, not only stops the downside, stop, he runs all the stops to the downside, then he takes it higher and we close up here. That's exactly what you saw in the one bar that I'll let you take a look at. Let's look. So, Gina asked, do they sell it to buy it? Oh, you're darn right. Sometimes the whales will push you through the door. So if we know there's significant stops to sell right here, we'll sell it and then hold out both hands and buy it as all of the stops get hit. And as everybody that was long gets rid of their position and then everybody that is a breakout seller starts to get short we're buying and then when the buying when the selling dries up we buy even more and drive it right back up and at this point the people who got short in the hole what do they have to do they have to cover and who are they buying them from us so look sometimes the whales push you through the door but remember even whales have to eat how much money does it she says, how much money does it take to sell to get long? Depends on the market, Reggie. If I know there are stop losses down here, money only take a couple billion. Sounds a lot to you, but you know, for hedge fund guys, it's not that much because we can also use leverage. Don't forget that. And I would I would I would say to all of you, please be judicious and don't over leverage your trading. But hedge fund guys, even if we're just leveraging, you know, two to one, three to one, a lot of money. It's not that hard if you know what you're doing. And I'm not telling you you should try and do this. Watch for these signs. I, again, we talk about this in market geometry all the time. Where are the buyers? Where are the sellers? So that when you see price come into that area, look for signs that a whale's feeding in that area. You don't want to cut, get caught getting short down here. Instead, you want to figure out, okay, this guy's going to take all these stops. Then he's going to push it higher. How do I get long? So let's talk about that. So here we are. The whale sells it. What do we get? We get breakout sellers. The whale eats, the whale sells it to buy it. So Gina had exactly right. So I think it was Sean. It's a range. Look, what do we get? 
We're right in the center of the ranch. The whale sold it, kind of a spoof bar. We break through, we close up here. It's absolutely beautiful action. It really makes me like this bar now, this, this balance line. If you like this balance line now, it cuts through this zoom. Cuts through this zoom. Look at this zoom. It's right in the center here. It's right where it's supposed to be. At some point, you need to learn to believe in what you're drawing as much as I believe in what I'm doing. Is the snapback just quick? No, of course not. Of course not. Sometimes you'll take three, four, five, six, seven bars. But you can tell by the balance of the bar. Some, the big key is really you don't want to see lots of closes on the lows. Then the whale's in trouble. What you'll see is a lot of pushing, close, pushing, close, pushing, close, pushing, close. All of a sudden, the, the, the low is down here and the close is up here, and then it's over. So let's take a look. Everybody, are we in a range? Hey, Sanjay, how are you? Still look it's like, like it's heading down. Okay. Anybody else? I don't care. You know what? Somebody's asked me if it's a data release. I don't even care. Doesn't doesn't mean anything to me. I got some ups. I got some ranges. Okay. I don't really care about data is meaningless to me. Even when I trade, I I will. For example, Matt says whale time time trying to trust uh, try to test the highs. Yep, that's a job. Now this next set of bars, we tested the lows. Now we should try and test the highs. Yeah, exactly right. I don't care about that. It's meaning I just put the time. time Peter's right. I write down the time of significant data like unemployment, just so I know what's about to happen. And if I have something that is uh, uh, if I'm up to enter a position, I'll probably wait till after the, the, it's out. But otherwise, I really don't pay attention to that. I don't care. It's meaningless to me. Okay, so the break's over. Let's go back to building our map. We're, this is 60 minutes we're looking at, everybody. So here's our map. We came down. We broke the balance line. I'm, I'm calling it a multi-pivot line. It's a balance line. Same concept. Multi now, also, key is we zoom this line, we zoom through this line, we've zoomed through this line. This line's all good. So you can see, sell to buy, there were buyers under this pivot line. So this is a classic wash and rinse. Now everybody should understand what a wash and rinse is. Now, here's our significant loss. with audio there, Cynthia? I get a couple people tinkling in here. Tim, I've just placed the uh, instructions on what to do if they lose audio. Um, I'm okay. We're still here. You're okay. You're doing fine. Okay. Breaking up a little bit, but um, you're still doing good. Nothing I can do about that at this point. All right. So we make this significant low. And uh, here's our close. This is, look at, look at the entire field here. This is our biggest bar on the field. Right here. This bar is our widest range bar on the field. And really the big key is this is called separation from the low to where we close. And we pay attention to that. So this swing now, because you might put a question mark down here. You Notice I took out my swing highs and swing lows for the most part, but you might put a question mark down here and say, Okay, maybe this is a swing low. I'm not sure. But looking at the close, it's a significant low. And its job now is to take out this high and this high. That's its job in life. So let's see what we get. All right. Remember that this is a multi-pivot line. What do we get? We run through and think of it as a door again. They open the door, they run through, and what do you think they found? Anybody? More than no buyers, what else did they find? Yeah, they found a whale, sure. They found some sellers. This is like a, this is like a football game. We got big linebackers, big whales on this side, big whales on this side. Chicago Bears, Keith Shaw. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. 
And where do we close? We close about the same place. So we got all this action jackson going on to the downside, close back up here. Same thing here. Open the door, run through. Where do we close? Right back in the same area. We're kind of stuck in the middle here. It, and it absolutely could be the same whale. You're absolutely right, Al. Why not? Take a look. If this guy can do nothing and make 100 pips, what's wrong with that? That's what happened when Ben speaks. Well, we call those idiot bars, or nitwit bars, excuse me. Uh, and my hat's off to Ben. Good friend. How are you, Ben? But still, nitwit bars. You know, if you get this kind of reaction, you get what you deserve. You're speaking too much, talking about nonsense. Stay away. Let the markets trade. So we're trading. We're closing right back here in the middle. So now let me just ask you a question. Buy to sell? So there were sellers above this multi-pivot line. Here we were selling to buy. There were buyers down here. Look at the nice separation on this bar. We had beautiful separation on this bar. Look at the nice separation on this bar. Two nitwit bars. And remember, these aren't five-minute bars. These are 60-minute bars. So it's a big deal to have this amount of separation on two back-to-back 60-minute -back bars. That tells you there's some significant players here. There's significant players here. This isn't just one fed announcer. This is two hours of trading. Big deal. So now let's take a look. Wait for the breakout from that range, says Sylvester. Yeah, wait for the closed outside range. It's not a bad idea. What's a trader to do now? Okay, does anybody have a gun to you? Do you have to trade right now? Price is closing right back in the middle. You saw the painful action. Hopefully you didn't follow through and get short down here and then stopped out here. And then you broke, you bought the, the breakout up here and get long up here and get stopped out here. And now you got the double whammy going. Hopefully you sat it out and went... I don't know. I want to. I want to see some significant movement on the side to here. What do you do? Go to a movie. That's not a bad idea, Brian. Well, the only thing I'd say about looks like a news event again. It's two hours long. Wait for test of pivots for a clue. Well, okay. Well, here's a test of pivots, and here's a test of pivots. Remember, this gap's a pivot. This is a pivot. We had test of pivots. What we don't have, we, the market hasn't told us anything, does it? Looks like an expanding pivot. Could be. Could be. That's a good question. Let me, Gina, let me repeat it to everybody. Where is the lowest risk entry, long or short, with that separation? Anybody got any ideas? Yes, nitwit bars are in the, in the invested. Yeah, in the market geometry would be absolutely. Bolt trap? I don't know. As above, so below. There you go, Vlad. I like that. Tops and bottoms. Whales on both sides. Sit up, pay attention, and wait for the tell. Man, I like that. It's the best advice so far. Uh, no. It's a two-hour. No, Jack, it's a two-hour. It's a two-hour. This is not ten minutes. This is two hours. Period. We need some fork logic for trade location. You think? Okay. If you cannot tell what the whales are doing, this is my number one advice for the day. I always try and give you one nugget. I've taught you what the whales are now. You've heard me talk about whales. Now you've seen Lucy's animation. If you cannot tell what the males are, whales are doing, it might be best to wait. Don't you think? Even if this thing is going to make a big move, if you can't tell, wait until you know. There's almost always a way to use this information. It might be later, but once you map out the market, there's a way to come back and use it later, almost always. Peter says, 50% of trading is waiting. I think it's more than that, Peter, but most people wouldn't give it yet. Somebody says 75% plus. I, uh, it's more than that, more than waiting. It's, it's managing yourself. It's not being into trade. It's having patience. It's understanding that this is a process. It's knowing that it's time to trade when you understand what's going on. If you don't understand, it's time for you to wait. Now we have people guessing about whether it's wrong. You know, we don't need to prognosticate. We don't need to guess. Oh, I like this. Wait till you find money on the floor and pick it up. Brian, I love that. I love that thought. I had a wonderful friend by the name of Egan. 
That's what he used when he used to trade on the floor. He said, I used to walk around and pick up one dollar bills or five dollar bills. Have a really good day. I used to walk around and pick up ten dollar bills. But I don't trade till I find the money on the floor. It's absolutely wonderful. All right. So where's the median line? That's a darn good question. I don't know. Let's take a look. Look, lower volatility. Here's what happens. We've got indecision now. Watch what happens. We've got buyers down here. We saw them. We opened the door. We saw them. We've got sellers up here. How? We opened the door. We saw them. So now we've got the indecision. We've got enough smart people to go, oh, my God. I've been stopped out to the downside. I've been stopped out to the upside. I don't have any more money to play. Look at how many hours go by. And then what happens? Lower volatility bars at the low end of the range. Follow first bar. That Look at this bar. With good separation. Lower volatility, so it's a tight range. Price coils rebuilding the energy that's sent, busting here and busting here. Maybe the whale's catching some sleep. Then finally, we get another bar that zooms through this balance line, and we close to the downside. So my brother studied with Dr. Andrews with me. He says, being patient without becoming the patient. Boy, that's not... That's a that's a good one right there. Down. We're gonna put that one up at market geometry. For okay. This is our take look. It's our first close. Since we just little valley down below of this balance line. Good. Situation. We close below. He said, "Where's the where's the uh, line?" Well, why don't we draw? I didn't do anything fancy. I used the major high. I used the I used the major high. Nothing. Nothing I can do if your deal's breaking up. Be patient. It'll come back. Or you can reconsider. Major, major low. Major high. I really like this median line because you see the touch here. But look at our run through this zoom lower. It's a very nice median line. If I was trading and I could afford the stop, I'll leave an order right here and just slide it down this median line until I can no longer afford it with a stop above this multi-pivot line if I think it's going down. And I like this bar with the close with good separation. You don't have to trade this way. You can wait. This median line set should show us the probable path of price. Now, if this median line gets beat and we take out these prior highs, I'm wrong, and we're due for a significant move up. Let's see what the market gives us. Price comes up. Here's our one bar lower. Here's our single close below. You don't have to ask me when this chart is from. There's the dates right there. We get one close below. It's a 60 minute chart. Now we head higher. I get to pay a little bit of attention here. Hang on. And we know with 80% probability, we're going to head and make it to the most likely line. So that's either the upper parallel or the median line. When we fail to go lower and take out this low, that tells us the price will make the upper parallel 80% of the time. And what do we do? We make it right to the upper parallel. We're not going to talk about forks or lines or anything else from prior highs or lows because they're off the board. This is all I'd be looking at if I was trading. I'm trying to show you what I would see through my eyes. So take a look. This is the fork I would draw. This is what I would be trading off of. I don't care what's over there. I don't want to know what the low is from 1999 or 2005 or 2007 or 2011. It's meaningless to me. Six months ago, it's meaningless to me. Three months ago, it's meaningless to me. I don't need to know what the low was the last time Ben spoke. It doesn't mean anything to me. What means something to me? This amount of data with 60-minute bars is about what I use. The market's going to have about this much memory. Otherwise, I'm going to be stacking lines on top of lines on top of lines on top of lines, and I'll be have such indecision that I'll never believe in what I'm trading and what I'm drawing. And I won't be able to trust myself, so I won't be able to master myself. I won't have patience. All those things that I need will be thrown out the window.
This is what I need. Now, you don't have to take this trade. There's always lots of trades. Greg says, I'm looking to understand the when I could bank on the 80% probability. Well, Greg, anytime you draw a meeting line, it's going to its least its next likely line 80% of the time. You can do the statistics yourself. There's been three doctoral dissertations done now at leading schools around the country on this concept after I brought it out. There's my studies out there, Dr. Andrews, and I can't tell you how many graduate students at MIT in the 20s did studies on it. Uh, it's just dead solid simple. So let's pay attention. If you don't like this sale, and most people wouldn't, we're still within the range. Was this just a false breakout? Did the whales twitch the worm to get you to sell? Or is this headed higher? Is this median line just baloney? That's what we need to know. Again, is this the first test of the upper parallel and would you trade it? Me, a lot of times I do trade it, especially if I like the stock. But if you don't want to trade it, that's fine. Let me just show you what it would look like. You enter a short at the upper parallel. MLH is our shorthand version for this. Initial stops got to be, pay attention to this, it's got to be all the way above the highest high. It's got to be. It can't be here, and it can't, boy, this is where most of you have run into trouble. This cannot be your stop. Because, look, one wide range bar, you're washed out. And if they gun the stops, they may take it a few pips past here just to run the stops and still not be able to take out significant sell orders here. Your stop has got to be up here, or don't bother to enter this trade. And again, there's nothing fancy about this median line. People are asking me, why do I know if this is the right median line and set up the right probabilities? This is the high. This is the low, and this is the high. There's no, you, you, we can't, there's no discretion here. High, low, high, simple, period. You don't have to take this trade. You can wait for confirmation. You can use this test as confirmation. If it blows through, you can pass on this. If it likes this meeting line, you can wait for confirmation. Okay, so let's go. So now I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit reading uh, a little bit here now and, and get back to the presentation because I'm, I'm at this point I'm now, and I'll answer your questions at the end because I'm getting a little bit distracted and we're getting uh, we're getting backed off. So here we go. We swing back here. Some of you might take this trade. Some of you might want more confirmation. That's fine. Because we haven't broken out of this structure yet. Take a look. This is the big structure on the board, of course. This range. We had sellers above, buyers below. What do we get? The bar that I would have entered on closed on its low. That's great. The next bar was also a wide range bar, closed on its low. And look at this bar. This is absolutely beautiful took out both of these lows and closed on its low. Now we've got some follow-through. We've got some mojo. Now, let me ask you a question. You don't have to answer if you don't want. Do the sellers have control now? Do you believe now? Because you shouldn't trade until you have an idea and you believe. If you didn't believe before, that's fine. No problem with not taking this trade. But when we're down here, do you actually think the sellers have control? Because you don't want to get into the identifying trade mode until you actually understand what's going on and believe. You don't have to take this trade. Don't feel bad about that. Somebody said, I didn't see the confirmation. You don't need to see the confirmation. If, you, if this is comfortable for you, don't take this trade. What I want to know now is, now that you see this bar, are you on the bandwagon? Do you get it? Does it make sense? If you look at all this and you see the biggest, baddest formation on the board, and now you see it busted, you see us trying to get back at the range, you see it failing, and we close down here, do you get it now? Lower lows, lower highs, absolutely. Okay. Now if you get it, if you don't get it, don't trade, don't, don't get in the trade mode. If you don't get don't 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 get the pistol. Just slow down. Sometimes you may miss the swing. You may miss two swings. Doesn't matter. What matters is you don't trade if you don't get it. Just wait. Learn to have patience. The process. 
If you learn that today, you will save yourself so much money. And Vlad says it's not so simple in real trading, that's for sure. Absolutely. So, But Vlad, let me say this to you and everybody else. Don't start to put in orders. Don't even think about orders until you understand where things are going. Slow down. Stop speeding. It's not a casino. This is not a roulette wheel. Wait until you understand what's going on. If you don't understand, it's not time. Now, most people should get it. Here, people that know Andrew's work might get it. You might not like the risk reward. You might have passed on this anyway. Here, everybody should get it. Does that mean there's a trade yet? No. Not necessarily. Can you all tell me where the sellers are now? Do you think there are sellers here now? Any there are sellers here? Yeah. Well, there might be sellers here. We're not sure. We, I'll tell you what. We know there are sellers, don't we? Don't we know that? And maybe we're wondering about this area. And I'll tell you what, maybe we're wondering about this whole gap area on the way over here. Because look where it failed. We couldn't get up here. So maybe, this, maybe the whales have moved lower. But we certainly know that there are sellers up here. So we know something. Matt says, I can hear Shane saying fact. Yeah, my partner. Fact. Just the facts that you know there are sellers here. Can we use it? Not yet. Not yet. Let's see what happens. If you like this trade and use median lines regularly and reward work for you and money management work for you and you were patient and you had your order and all those things had to be a yes. And you, and you were sure you knew where the market was going, and it was time to trade. Then you would put an order in, and your order got filled, and your initial stop was here. Price will go to the median line after it's hit the upper parallel and turns lower. 80% of the time, where does price go? Right to the median line, period. And 101. The first thing Dr. Andrews would tell you in his living room. Price goes to the median line 80% of the time. And by median line, he means whichever line it's headed for. Simple, plain statistics. As Shane would say, fact. We know where there's sellers up here. We know where it's headed right to the median line. And also, by the way, test the prior lows. Uh, right now, I'm not going to go through questions. I'm going to get it lost. Let's, let's, let's do some simple drawing here. Okay, where do we go? Price falls vertically. This is very important. We talked about this, I want to say, last session, um, either metals or grains. When it falls vertically, it's price moving without time or space moving. Think about it. The two have to move in step. Eventually, they have to catch up with each other. Think about that. It's like a dance. Those of you that are members at Market Geometry, Watch me do a nice um, steep tango with my good friend Rebecca. And we danced all the way through price on a big move. And uh, it was a session not to be missed, probably not to be repeated, but not to be missed. It was a lot of fun. But what did we learn about that? We learned that price can't go by itself because what happened is eventually time has to catch up to it. Just like if you fling a dancer to the side and you're holding onto her hand, either you have to go to her or she has to come to you. That's what has to happen. It's the same thing with price and time. That one is connected to the other, and eventually they will meet back up. So if we get a vertical move, that's time moving all, excuse me, price moving all by itself. What does that mean? That means that, think about it, time and space, which is moving to the right, has to catch up. So when you see this vertical move, you can expect we're going to get a lot of coiling move to the right before anything significant happens. And what happens? We go from the median line to the upper parallel, and we do it, I mean, we move a little bit lower, but relative to this vertical, we don't really move very far. If you look at it, we actually don't move very far. We do a little up and down, but this is price catching up with time and space. And where do we meet? We meet right at the upper parallel. And what happens? You can see 
Everything is caught in this nice, nice slow dance. Look at the lack of volatility in these bars. And then when we break out and get above the upper parallel, now we call this on a switchback. We're on the other side. All of a sudden, we've got some momentum. Pendulum pulls up. We find some small sellers. You can draw on a beautiful multi-pivot line here, right here, by the way. Do it yourself later on when you get the slides. And you can see why this ran out of energy right here. Somebody took some nice profits right here. Again, you can see a multi-pivot line here, a balance line right here. Pushed price up, ran it right into the sellers, pushed price back down. What do they run into? They run right back into this upper parallel, a bit lower, and now it coils. And look at the nice, tight coil right down here at the upper parallel. And this is where price and time comes together. They're glued back together again, price, time, and space, all together. And it's at the tight coil, testing the outside of the outer parallel. And you can see the tell is that we've broken to the upside. After price falls vertically, space and time must catch up. That's what's making the tight coils. The two can't go in separate directions. Price can't fall to zero. It's not going to happen. There's going to be pauses. It has to catch up. If you're a physicist or if you understand physics, price ran out of potential energy. It has to recover it. This is price restoring its potential energy. Then it can expend its potential energy. Now it's out of energy. It's got to restore it. And it's full of potential energy. Very simple. But it's the truth in trading, in anything in life, okay? Energy runs everything. When you're out of balance, you have to come back into balance. All right, let's take a look and see what we get now. Here we know. Open gap zone. Here's, Sh here's my buddy, Sean. Yeah, Shane. Fact. Just the facts. The sellers want a major victory right here. We know that, right? We know that. This was the battleground, and here's the marker where they won their victory. So let's mark it out. And I'm just going to use the open gap zone. The low of the gap, the high of the gap. I'm just going to bring it all the way across. I know that the sellers won the victory here. The buyers tried and lost. The sellers were tested several times, and they won a major victory. Look at it right here. Now, if you didn't like this entry here, can you throw this map out? You done? It's useless? What do you think? Time to redraw? Time to hit hit a race like, like my partner does and just redraw everything? What do you think? Warning line? Yeah, maybe. Redraw. Okay. I've got some redraws, I've got some warning lines. Okay. Here's modified shift, maybe. Okay. Here's here's some advanced here's some advanced homework for all of you. Remember that we remember this coil right here at the switchback. And we swung higher and we came back and we formed this energy. It's a nice nice tight energy coil right here. Pay attention because this is your homework, ready? If you want to do advanced homework, pay attention here and see if you can diagram out the swing in the other direction. See if you can draw using the same principles a swing in the other direction. What would cause it? Why it would happen? And if you see it, only if you see it, an opportunity to take this in the other other direction, to trade in the other direction. Let's see where the market goes. Here we go. If you've given up on here, if you want to do a modified shift, if you want to do a warning line, if you want to hit redraw, you missed the whole point. The sellers want a major victory right here. This is the fact. Let's go back again. Fact. Just the facts, Jack, as Shane would say. The sellers want a major victory right here. You don't need to know nothing else. Now, believe me, when price is down here at 124, in the back of your mind, the last thing you're thinking is that you're going to be making a trade at 126.80. 
But this is why you have to master yourself, especially when you get to such major areas like this and you start to get action. This is called a nexus. All things are possible. It's a null point in physics. It means it's a, it's a point that has no space but is full of energy. Anything can happen. And, of course, we can't move back in time in the markets, so anything forward can happen. So you know only one thing, unfortunately, in this market, and you need to rely on that. What are the facts? Sellers want a major victory right here. You don't need anything else. At this moment, unless you're doing advanced work, and you can do this yourself later on. I'll show you the next screen. You keep this in the back of your mind. The seller, I'm going to say it again, sellers want a major victory right here. I know it's 280 pips away. I know that. I get that. But 99% of you here today do not have that in the back of your mind, which is why when it happens, and it doesn't take very long, are you prepared to deal with this area when we get there? Or are you on the happy go, go, get long trade and thinking about new highs? 99% of you are not ready to deal with this area when we get there. It's not in your mind. You haven't thought about it. It's not possible. It can't happen. And if you're not in that mindset, that price is going right to where the sellers want a major victory, you can't deal with it. Well, John says time to take profit. Okay, if you're capable of doing, this is the advance work right here. If you can find the correct way to get long here, you send it to me, that's fine. That's your homework for today. However, I'm not even talking about that. I'm willing to say nobody caught this short and nobody caught this long. Here's, here's the question. Here's the question. No, we're not going to be breakout buyers and sellers. Philip, you do that at market geometry, you get shot. Period. Done. Shot. Done. Sellers want a major victory right here. Can you deal with it? Somebody asked earlier, I think it was Gina. Can't we ride the whale? Sure. How about selling with the whales? What is it? Dancing with the stars? Is that the name of it? I don't I've never seen it, but I know it's real popular. I think that's right. All right. When we get up here, who's your buddies? Who's your buddies? Did you did you forget about these guys? Yeah, Gina's got it. Whales. Where are the whales? Where are they likely to be? What tells you the whales are there in the heat of the moment? Ahmad, you have to be in the mindset of, hey, price is coming out of the hole. Where's my next point of interest? Where are the sellers likely to be? Right here. What's to tell me? Because they want a big victory. Listen, it's like, I don't know if you play chess, Ahmad. If you play chess, the worst thing you can do is recapture the same territory over and over and over. If you're a general, if you're somebody running this market, if I've recaptured this market, as price comes up here, and I know it's out of energy, this is when the buyers are at their weakest. And we're not going to watch four-hour charts, none of that stuff. No, 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 no. We only look at one time frame. We don't believe in multi-time frame charts. That's The gentleman that's done this is a nice gentleman, and he's got a nice place in the Bahamas, but he doesn't know anything about trading. Look, everything we need is right here. We know the boys are here. Okay, the orders are sitting here. This is the whale's mouth. Come sell with the whales. They're not going to send you a, a written invitation, but this is it. This is it. We're right down here. Believe me, you were all going, oh, I wish I'd sold up here. Well, here's your chance. Step up. The whales were here before. They're here again. Let's look. Have a good day. Sell with the whales. Here we are right here. Again, your stop has got to be up here. It's got to be. Once we start to swing lower, you can collapse your risk. 
but your initial stop's got to be up here. It's got to be. If you can't afford it, don't take the trade. But this is what should be on your mind right here. Now, if you draw in a smaller median line later on, you can find smaller trades in here. You can get short later on. But you're, if you want to trade initially with the whales, it's right here, and your stop's up here. If that risk reward works for you, and you can afford that stop, this trade is a no-brainer. There's various logical profit targets to the downside. First one, of course, is our prior low. And you can see we get a huge vertical move right to it. It's a great time to take profit. Why? Vertical moves sometimes are terminated because then time and space have to catch up. Instead, what we do, we coiled, and then we had another vertical move. And as we get closer to this first warning line, again, it's a great time. In fact, I didn't put it, but the first warning line of this mod modified ship is also right here. This is a great time to take your profit target. But remember, pigs get slaughtered. How much is enough? When is enough enough? So there's nothing wrong. Look, if you took your profit here, if you saw this trade, God bless you. You're, you're finally getting and trading with the whales. Somebody says trading with the whales takes patience, but it's the best way. It's absolutely the best way. If you can't be a whale, trade with us. But, you know, if you get this amount of money, that's a lot of money. 280 pips? Look, mastering your impatience, mapping out the facts, and just trading at the correct areas offered you between 5 to 1 and 7 to 1 risk reward here. 5 to 1. Yeah, the second one is the, is the first extension, first warning line. Absolutely. You know, you can go ahead and try for this. Make sure you've keyed in your stops, moved your stop, your profit floor. But there's nothing wrong with taking your profit right here, which is at the prior lows. But you, first, you've got to be in the right mindset, which is as we swing higher, hey, the whales are going to be here. Let me try and swim with the whales. And as I said, here's some more. If you want to do some less advanced homework, you can find this. This is the end of July. Here's the beginning of August. You can find this area right here. Sorry, this is July 22nd. You can find this area in a 60-minute right here. And you can put in smaller median lines, and you can find that there's an entry here with a nice stop. There's a smaller entry here. There's a beautiful entry here. There are various secondary entries right in this area that would give you a smaller stop. The risk reward is not, not as good, but it's certainly 3 to 1. Go ahead and take a look. There's lots of median lines that would have worked. There's no reason for me to show it. Believe me, I went through 5 or 6. It, it doesn't matter. The key, really, is just to show you there's various places to take targets, to take profits. Just don't be a pig. Because if you'd held on too long here, when it went vertical, you'd be fighting the urge. You'd be saying, well, look how much money I had. Now it's up here. I don't know if I want to get out here. Pretty soon you're back at break even. Same thing can happen here if you're not careful. Let me ask you a question. Everybody stop and think about this. Here we are, let me put you in my shoes. You get short. Price runs all the way down here. It's closing on its low. It looks great. But you don't elect to take profits. Now, you're drinking your tea, you're relaxing, and all of a sudden, out of the corner of your eye, you get this huge run up. Somebody's running the table on you. Now you're all the way back up in here. Half your profits are now gone. Half of your profits are now gone. How many of you are now ready to hit the, you know what, I've had enough button. Take whatever money's left and get out of the trade. Or instead, are you, here's, here's your current one. Most of you are not. I'm going to tell you right now. Somebody said earlier it's hard to do it real time. This is more difficult. Yeah, somebody finally said guilty. Yeah. How many of you get frozen instead and say, "Well, I I had I had you know uh, two three uh, two hundred and forty points, and now uh, I've only got a hundred left." And pretty soon, you feel like you know there's hands around your throat because you've only got ten pips left. Look, it's tough. I can tell you, I've been doing this for more than 40 years, but I can tell you from being around, like being on the floor with guys that have been trading for 25 years and watching guys 
turn beautiful profits into losses because at this point they're frozen. The best way out of that is to have good profit targets and take your money off the table. Risk management, trailing stops, you have to do it. That's exactly right, man. Money management, you have to manage yourself or you're dead. You won't be able to deal with it in the heat of the moment. If you couldn't see this sell, that pre when price started to move up here, if you couldn't see that the whales would be here, believe me, you will not be able to pull the trigger as price comes out of the hole. You're still short. You're dead. Just not going to happen. I'm sorry. You're gonna, you know what you're going to end up being? Whale food for people like me. You're going to be guppies. So take your profit. Take money off the table. Look, here goes the extra leg. Who cares? You got your piece. Isn't that what happens? Take your money. Be happy. Somebody else gets that? That's okay. Now, for those of you that are wondering, say, let's think about it. Is this over? Should we, uh, should we dump this map now? And redraw, let's, should, how about this? Somebody's asking earlier, maybe I should do a, a regular median line. Should I grab this high or this high and take this low and this high and draw on a new median line? We'll trade off of that. And let's, at this point now, maybe the sellers are stale. We could throw this out. And, you know, what do you think we should do? Peter says, I'm on the beach by now. <laughs> well, if you caught both of them or all three of them, absolutely, why not? Your month to be made. Absolutely. You have 600 pips in the bank, 700 pips, why not? Be done. What do you think we ought to do? What do you think about this area? Done? Finished? Kaboom? I got another piece of homework for you. This pattern works over and over and over again. How about that? You can do this homework or not, it's up to you. This pattern repeats over and over and over. All right, here we go. I'm going to show you. This is advanced stuff. Don't let your head spin. Just relax. Some of this is very advanced, Andrew. Some of this is very advanced, Tim Morch. That's okay. Just slow down and relax. You're going to get the slides at the end when you exit. You just hit yes and grab the PDF. You can get all the slides. You can recreate the charts. You, know, you, can, re you can view this 100 times if you want at IB. That's what's beautiful about this. As price is coming down, I look. You'll see where this is in the chart later on in a minute. Just pay attention to what I'm doing. I see three drives to the bottom, one, two, three, and they're higher drives. I just mark them out, see them, one, two, three. Now, if you saw these and you like these, that's fine. You could use those as well, I'll show you. One, two, three, all I do is I connect the bottoms, simple. It just tells me the frequency of what's going on. You can take this line. That's not the key, it's not, not doing anything special, so just watch. I take this. If you have Ensign or any other charting package like eSignal that allows you to grab a line and just drag it through, you drag it through, you grab, you'll see that this low gives you these lows. This this slope gives you these highs. This this is this market's frequency. I'm going to use that. I'm not ready to use it yet. Now, if you chart a lot like I do, you know you can see when these three lows form that this is this slope moves throughout this pattern, throughout this chart. It's over and over and over. Here, take a look. Look right here. Can you see this gap in this high? You see it? This is the problem with path of price. I don't even have to draw the median line. This is still 60 minutes. This is still the euro. I don't need to draw the median line. Here's the probable path of price. Why? Take a look at how it, this frequency is goes throughout this chart. Look at it here, right through the gap. I mark, remember the gap zone before? Everybody remember the gap zone before from up above, where the boys were at? 
the sellers, the whales, the boys? Anybody? Can you remember that? Think back in your mind. I'll go back if you need me to. Okay. Julius has got it. Everybody else, put it in your mind. Think about it. You remember that gap? If you don't, I'll go back and refresh it for you. Okay. Hey, Lockie, how are you? So, here's, again, same gap. Same gap going on here. And what do I have? I've got a multi-pivot line. See it? See the highs? See the lows? It's a balance line. What do I have up here? I've got the upper part of this formation. I've got these highs. So I've got a zone. I'm marking it out. Why? This is balance right here. And at the moment, we've been below balance. Are we going to stay below balance? If we stay below balance, I'm going to be interested in something downsloping. If we break above balance, I'm going to be looking for something upsloping. Does that make sense to everybody? If we're below balance, I'm going to be looking for something downsloping, like I had a downsloping media line. If we break above balance, I'm going to be looking for something upsloping. Now, I'll, what's really going on here? Can any, anybody, Gina, can you tell me what just happened? This even answers one of your questions. It's more than whales just waiting down there. Balance shift, yeah. Price flowing from one hand to the other. How about this, Gina? Does this sound familiar? Selling to buy. Matt, running them both ways. How about this? Selling it to buy it. What do you think of that? You know, if somebody's making ridiculous comments, don't worry about it. Just ignore them. It's no problem. That happens. Selling it to buy it. Do you see that now? This goes all the way back to when we first did the whale presentation. Stop and think about that. Drive price away from value. Gina, you got it. And then back to value. Absolutely. Away from balance, right back to it. A big, fat wash and rinse. Gina, I think you're the one that asked, does it have to happen in that quick? It doesn't have to happen that quick. If I'm, this is cash, foreign exchange, no, this is future, same thing. There's no difference between the futures of cash. It doesn't matter. Wash it away from balance. When you move all the stops, run it right back. Now we're at balance, right? Now the question is, the big question, if it stays below balance, I'm going to need a downsloper. If it breaks above balance, I'm going to need an upsloper. But now you know what happened. Wash and rinse. Now, this may have been a wash and rinse, by the way, Gina. Maybe this happened on a daily. Maybe this happened on 240. But this is a simple wash and rinse. That's all it is. And now we're at balance. You don't need to look back at those larger time frames. You can see it in the 60 minutes. When you see this happen and you see the energy coil form right at the gap, open gap, it's a wash and rinse. Ah. Now, you can see what happened. They sold it to buy it. Now, everybody that got short down here became whale food, and these are the stops being run to the upside. Can you see it? Now, I need an upsloping line. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do this one. Ahmad says, amazing how you can work from one time frame and see what the big boys are doing. I am the big boys, Ahmad. Nobody's bigger than me in foreign exchange. Hey, let me just tell you this. Trade the time frame you're in. You don't need any other time frame. If it's going to happen in the dailies, it has to happen in the 60s first. If it's going to happen in the 20s, you're going to see it in the 60s. You're going to see it in the 20s. If you're going to see it in the 20s, you'll see it in the 5s. Whatever you're trading, stay in that one chart. Stay in the moment. Stay with it until you can see clearly. If you keep going back and forth in time frames, you'll never, ever get it. You'll never be able to read charts like this. Just stay in one time frame, whatever you're going to trade, and relax and chart it until you can see it. 
Don't worry about the train. Don't you know what? If you don't trade until you know what's going on, the train will have a hard time finding you, Mod. Okay, so here we go. Wash and rinse. We're at balance. When it starts to take out the highs, these are the stops being run. Hopefully this isn't you. Tick charts are fine. You can use tick charts. Any, you can re use range bars. It doesn't matter. But stay with what you, what you work with. Don't keep looking back and forth at different things. Stops get run. Hopefully it's not you. Sell it to buy it. There's stops up here. Push the stops. Let these people chase their tail. You get to take profits now if you're a whale. But now I need an upsloping line. Where am I getting an ups upsloping line? Why, look, I've got one right over here. Remember creating this one? I get, it's right here. I didn't have this yet. Look, look what I had. I had nothing. But here's my upsloping line. I, I got it waiting in the wings. I'm patient. It's okay. Easy. Okay, price blows off to the upside. I need an upsloping line. I've got it. What do I do? I copy the slope, put it down below. I'm all good now. Does it mean anything yet? No. Why? I'm at 123.20. Look where my line is. That doesn't mean it's not meaningful. Remember back before, we were at 124, and the whale fat area was 126.80. That doesn't mean this isn't going to become an interesting area. Maybe not. Maybe it will. But I do know one thing. I knew where the whales were. I know where they are. They sold it to buy it. They're going to be right here. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know there's whales maybe up above. I'm going to lean on them if they get up there. Now I know something right here. Don't I have fact right here? Anybody think there's fact right here? I have no, yeah, I would have no position here unless I was the whale running the, running the table. I got fact right here. Wash, sell them to buy them, push the stops. You got to bet they're going to be right here again. Let's see what we get. Now remember, here's the big picture. All I did was zoom out for you. This is way too much data, but I want you to remember that sellers won a major victory right here. 126.60, 126.80, 127.00, right in there. Sellers won a major victory. Don't forget that. This is fact to the upside. This is our fact to the downside. Can you identify the buyers and sellers? Well, I know there's sellers here. How about you? And I saw the wash and rinse here, and this is the balance line. I know there's buyers right here. You can see more of the multi-pivot line right here. This is fact right here. Buyers right here, sellers right here. Okay, remember before we were boxing in this small area. Now I got a big box. I got a big box. If you want to play, I've mapped out the buyers and sellers. Now I have to be patient and execute. Don't you want to play with the whales? Don't you want to swim with the whales? I'm not willing to play up here. I might be willing to play up here, and I'm willing to play down here. I'm not willing to play near. There's nothing for me to do up here. Especially if you're if you're smaller, if you're a one lot trader, what do you want to do? You want to trade where you know the buyers and sellers are and stay out of the way the, other, the rest of the time. Very simple. Well, I'm willing to trade down here, and I'm willing to trade up here because I've mapped out the buyers and sellers. Here's the buyers. Here's the sellers. And I've got them in advance. Here's my upsloping frequency. And up here, I don't need anything. It's the dumbest area in the world. It's been up here. I'm convinced the sellers are here. I've got a couple things to lean on here. I've got an upsloping line that catches the frequency, and I've got an area of confluence. This is where the whale should be. And as time goes to the right, the space and time move to the right, this area is converging my upsloping line with an area where the buyer should be. I'm going to use this area. I'm going to use this area. This is why I built the map. I didn't build the map 
to have fun. I built the map to make money. Watch. When we're up here, we don't think it has any relevance. What am I willing to do? I'm willing to buy the confluence, the area where price, time, meet, where energy is in balance. Where are we? We're right at the balance line. We're right where the buyers are. We're also at the right frequency. Look at this frequency run right through this chart. At the right frequency, here's my upsloping line. Here's my buyers. They all come together at one spot. This is an energy point. And what happens? Done. I've got my buy order in. I'm long at the retest. Where am I willing to get out? And by the way, Shane and I made this trade. Such brave place to buy when such a sell-off. Raj, that's when money is made. If you understand what's going on, hey, this was a brave place to sell, but it was the place to sell. This was a brave place to sell, but it was the place to sell. If you understand where the sellers are and where the buyers are, this was not a brave place. In fact, this was a very timid place because you were trading almost like inside information. Price is attracted, the wrong word is buying, the right word is activity. Price is attracted to activity, and here's the activity right here. We're coming right back to where the whales are. Raj, if you, if you watch this presentation, watch it some more, it's not that difficult. But you don't trade until you can do it. Now, watch the swing. Price comes down, you have to be ready. I know where I'm willing to trade. I'm willing to trade long here. I'm willing to trade short here. In between, not interested. Please don't send screenshots to people. That's a great way to get banned from future presentations. Just pay attention, boys and girls. Long at the retest. We made this live. We did this trade live in market geometry. Trade the edges, exactly right. Where are we out? Prior highs. Right, where the whales were selling before. This is fact. This was fact. This is not hard, Raj. You need to take the time to understand where the buyers and where the sellers are. Map it out and wait. It's only hard if you're not willing to wait. If you're willing to wait, it's not only easier, it's very, very profitable. You'll trade less, so you won't pay as much brokerage. Sorry, Cynthia. But that's Cynthia's family that as long as you make money. What she wants is she wants people that are around for a long time. It's better risk. How about that? Why not stop under the wall? Well, I think it's, hey, David, let me see. I think it is time to take this question. One second. Yep. Whales, 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 whales on both sides. So thank you for taking the time, and we'll take questions. David says, why not stop under the wash? Well, David, if you take a look, it's too expensive. Risk reward, and this is a swing. Remember, we've got this way squeezed in. We should be out. Take a look. We should be out at this even more. Remember, this is the amount of slice that we are working with. So when we get to this, look how squeezed in we are. So this is a, these are actually swings down here. So we, we're fine for two reasons. Not only are these swings, but these are also underneath the area where whales should be buying. If we get down here, we're underneath our frequency line. We're underneath where the buyer should be, and it's over. This game's over. The whales aren't there. We're going to new lows. Now, I think Cynthia's about to say something. Before she does, let me just remind you. She's about to do a poll, but I never get to say this. In the middle of the poll, there's this little box that allows you to write in something. Make sure you write in there's more Cynthia or a webinar or something like that because that gives her important feedback to her boss, the president of IB, and allows her to do more of these. Okay, I don't, You don't worry about putting my name in there. I'm all good. I'm all fine. As long as Cynthia is happy, as long as Cynthia gets taken care of, you'll get more quality education. That's what's important to me. And then we'll come back and answer questions. Am I front running you, Cynthia? I think you certainly are, Tim. <laughs> 
<laughs> Boy, are you so, you are so tuned in that you even knew as I was about to hit my unmute button. So thank you very much. Okay. And yes, I do have to take a break here, and we're going to let Tim sip on tea and go back and review some of those questions. But okay. notice, IB's management does ask me to run a poll in each of these events. We try and keep it short. There's just three uh, questions there, and as Tim said, question number two. But in addition to what Tim was talking about, actually what I'm looking for there are any comments or suggestions on upcoming webinars, because that's what we actually, um, I do review with my management team weekly, and they are interested in what it is that you want to learn more about. That's what's allowed us to bring you Tim. Now notice, um, the poll is only open for a short time, um, so once you make your suggestions, you can uh, then please make sure you click that submit button. That actually is what allows me to compile your results. Now there's two seconds left, so go ahead and click submit. If I did, and the poll did end, so thanks everyone for uh, <laughs> participating in that. But if you do have those comments or questions, I want you to know that you can still send them to me at webinars at interactivebrokers.com. By the way, close that polling panel so that you can reopen up the chat. Simply use the X in the panel title bar and it will remove it. Now, chat panel is collapsed, so simply double click the title bar and it will reopen it up so that you can send those questions in to Tim. So back to you, Tim. I see the easiest question on the board. When's the next seminar or webinar? It's the second, we're always the second Thursday of the month. <clears throat> That's right, and that puts it up to November 8th, so mark your calendars. I'll be working with Tim after today's event to um, put, uh, to publish that webinar out on our site. Normally it takes a week or so for us to get it out there, but as soon as it's available, it will be listed. So right now, please mark the date, November 8th, and uh, for Tim's next presentation. There you go, and it's two days after the election. That ought to be lots of fun, huh? Uh, oh, it should be an interesting day for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm not even. I'm not going to front run and tell you what the uh, what we're going to talk about. But especially given the topic, you'll have a lot of fun right after the election. It's going to be a good time. So, that's all I'm going to say. Nothing else. But. <laughs> a bit of a tease. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're happy with it, Cynthia, I'm good. So. Oh, absolutely. This has so been tremendous. Yeah, where can you find the link to the webinar the recording of the PDF? Cynthia, I can do these. When you leave, <laughs> two things are going to happen. They're going to email. If you are here, and, you, unless, and I don't think you could have gotten here with a bad email. As long as your email address is correct, you will get this nice follow from IB that gives you a nice little link that you can go back and watch. This, it takes about two hours, three hours for them to compile it. But once that happens, they'll send you an email. So if you want to watch the, the webinar again, here it is. You can watch it over and over. You can look up my name at the educational tab, and you can find there. There's all the back, all the way back to 2005. They're forever. You can go back and just review them. And uh, once you set things up, you'll get that. And as you leave, here's the cool part, though. You'll get this opportunity to, to accept the PDF and download the slides. Now, if you forget to do it this time or you don't want to, you can always do it afterwards. Um, next time you view it, you have a chance to go, go get it. There's also a link on the email to grab the slides, and they're in PDF format. So, you you know, any way you do it, it's hard to screw it up. I, even I go back. I can, I can get, I get my thing from Cynthia. I can go back and review this and go, okay, we're – how can I make this better? So it's very easy. Um, let's see, what else is released? For, uh, do I have a tentative date for building a professional trading plan? Yes, I do. Our next seminar that we're doing at Market Geometry is, this. I want to say, Saturday, December 5th. Carlos, you can tell me whether that's a Saturday. But that's off the top of my head. Um, but, it'll be December, but we'll be talking about next week at Market Geometry, and then, then it'll be a general publication. But, yeah, actually, I just said that today with Shane. Um, Lots of questions, and I'm going to have to go back to charts to do them. So I'm trying to get everything out of the way before I, before I do charts. And one before I forget, and I always, Barbara's not here, but Barbara Schmidt Bailey is the one that brought me to the board and introduced me to Cynthia. The three of us have been together for a long time. I'm not going to say how long, Cynthia. It's not polite, but we do lots of stuff together. We have a good time, and we do it because you know we're helping other traders out, and that's that's the whole gig here. We're not. No one's trying to sell anything. Nobody's trying to push anybody to do anything. It's free education. Hopefully you come back every month. It's always two weeks after Futures Education, uh, Futures University from the CME, and we always cover the same topics. Um, so they do the, uh, if you will, the, the theory, and we're doing the practice two weeks later, and that's how it works. Um, so let's go. 
Let's see if we can answer some questions. And Cynthia's been pasting them in for I really appreciate it, Cynthia. So if I miss your question and you ask, and you asked it much earlier on and you were very polite, just come back and type it back in, you know, just copy and paste it back in. So was there a tell back on June 20, 21st that the whales could only pierce the upper multipedal line by a small amount? But we're going to go all the way back, okay. All right. I'm willing to do that. And I know I could hit the forward but back button, but let's just scroll through them all. So we're here. Okay. And we are, I guess we are in June. I don't, it might be July. I don't know. I get confused. I'm easily confused. So here we are. This is fifth grader work. And we're in a very tight range. When you're in a tight range, as we said, if you don't know, stay out. I see sellers here. I see buyers here. I don't see any tell. Take care, Ono. I'll see you later. I don't see anything here. So I'm going to stay out unless I'm a whale, okay? Remember, unless I'm a whale. Now, price moves to the downside. There's no tell. Somebody pushes it off the shelf. The key, though, to notice, as you're watching this as a trader, don't have too much data. You saw some of those spies were all scrunched in. Don't even do that. Don't watch too much data. Instead, pay attention. Be focused on a single bar and watch it unfold. You're not ready to trade it anyway. You watch it unfold, and you see the stop is all the way back up here. That the, the bells ought to be going off in your head. Why? Well, that tells you that you don't have enough information. You know what just happened. You couldn't trade with them. There was no reason. I think it was Raj that said, boy, that's a scary place to buy. This is a place where you don't have enough information to buy, unless you're the one doing the pushing. But when you see this close, this ought to be giving you some information. And what's the information? I didn't see this, and we're back up here, and right back in the center. So I'm not sure what's in control now. There's a large tail below the gray line on this slide. On the next bar, the orange line is the only is only pierced by a bear. Oh, let me look. Uh, no, that's the door. You're talking about that. Okay, so I don't know that the buyer is going to do it. The key here is the close. tells me that I, I don't know enough yet. Now the question is, what about this tail up here It's not as big as this tail? No, we're not going to measure tails. This is what we care about. We care about that it's got great separation. This is as much information as this is. Sure, I'd, I'd love this to be 40 pips long, but you get what you get. The key is you know that they opened the door enough because of the separation. It's not how far they went. It's that it was enough to scare everybody back. There were sellers. They didn't even run them into the area. They just started selling right away. They were they were stepping over each other to get hit the bids to sell, okay? The key is the separation. This is where you should be sitting up Take, paying attention. Now, when you see these two bars, here's the honest truth. This part, Raj, you're right. This, you don't want to be buying this. You don't want to be selling this. This is what you want to be doing. Uh, I don't get this one. Hey, Ouija, how do it? I don't, I don't get it. I'm in the middle of nowhere here, and both times what looked like important bars ended up in the middle of nowhere, so I need no more. That's the important decision here. Remember, flat is as valid as long or short. I need to know more. I don't have an idea yet. Not not a valid one. So I'll, I'll sit this one out. Because there were buyers here, there were sellers here, and we're right back in the same area. I'll sit this one out. All right, so now, finally, this is not actually generally people deciding to sit it out. These are people being beat into submission on both sides. They tried to buy it. They tried to sell it. Finally, they've all been stopped out. They've been dragged along the bus, I call this. You're just tired. You just had enough. The market's given up. So it's gone to sleep. It's restoring energy. And finally, somebody wakes up and pushes it, and we get our first close down here. Now, if there's any tell at all, if there's any tell at all, this close right here, why? At this time, we've been balance on this multi-pivot line since we this formation here. And we had no formations at all. So we've got a solid wall here that we've tried to pierce and couldn't. This line is significant. It has been pierced once, and we finally get a close below it. 
Tony, I like this. When I see bars like this, I put my hands in my pocket. Good. Good. And that's a set, that's something we used to say on the floor at the CME. Time to put your hands in your pockets because you don't want somebody next to you putting their hands in your pocket, taking the money that you work so hard. So, this may be a tell. The run-up has taken out a lot of smaller prior swing highs. Would you not consider that this is a change in behavior to the upside? Why would you think short at the prior whale area? Raj. Raj. I don't have that many days in here, and nobody is making any progress here to the upside. Nobody. All of this is marking time. Long, short, doesn't matter. In fact, you know, we, we talk about at market geometry, we talk about um, the swings that are in charge, okay? This is the swing that's in charge, and it's two bars wide. That's it. That's it. All of this, this is fluff. It's meaningless. I'm looking for you, Raj. Hang on. Hang on with me, folks. There's there's no action up here at all. This is a dead zone up here. Anything you want to do, let me skip that about 20 so I get. You're just running into whales. So, as we come down here, this is our first perhaps tell. Well, if it's later, we'll get it, Raj. For me, that's enough for me now to finally draw a median line. People were asked, well, I'm not really sure where to draw. Hey, it's the major high, the major low, the major high. No smoke and mirrors. No smoke and mirrors. No discretion at all. Yes, we'll go a, we'll go a few, Raj. Just relax. That alerts me to draw this. Am I going to use it? I don't know. I don't know if price is going to get up here. I don't even bother to prognosticate. As I said earlier, all things are possible. But if I'm not ready, I'm certainly not going to be ready to trade. For me, the median line set should show me the probable path of price. If this is my first tell and we go up here and I like the risk reward, this is a trade possibility for me. Do I have to take it every time? No, but I'll show you what it looks like if I take it. Here's the next few bars, and you can see most people are saying false breakout. This is an opportunity to me if the risk reward looks right. So here we go. The risk reward's got to be better than 3 to 1. Okay. Svetlana says, isn't the median line, not the upper parallel, the most probable line? No, it's the line here. Median lines, as Dr. Andrews spoke about them, um, you got to remember the 1920s, a little flowery in their language. When he says 80% of the time price is going to the median line, he means this line or the parallel or the lower parallel or the next warning line, whichever line you're heading toward that has that frequency and that amount of space between it. That's the most likely line. So in this case, because we were unable to take out the lows with 80% probability, we're going to the upper parallel. There you go. You're welcome, Ouija. Um, well, we'll get to the last slide. So for me, I'm checking the risk reward. Again, the stop has got to be up here. It can't be here. None of these are swings. It's got to be above these sellers. I want to take advantage of these sellers. I'm using these sellers as protection. So my stop's going to be up here. My profit target is going to be, and I'll slide it lower as price moves to the right, down this median line. It's got to be at least 3 to 1. Otherwise, I'm not going to take the trade. Okay, so here, oh, here you go. At 127, what about Agopians? And the question here is, um, we did not make it to the median line. Well, in this case, remember, the median line and its parallels have not been tested yet. So we haven't made any progress to either side yet. 
we have to be moving significantly toward the median line. We have to be taking out this low before we can worry about Hagopians. Because otherwise, we could also say that we have Hagopians because we haven't taken out these highs. It's just a little too early. So if you decide to take this trade, we're just going to measure it based on our potential stop and our potential profit target. It's got to be at least 3 to 1. And this is a stop that's not too large for your account. This may be a trade you're interested in. If this stop is too big for your account, don't consider it. But don't. the worst thing you can do is try and take a cheap stop here because you will get stopped out too many times and it'll ruin the risk reward that you harvest. You need to harvest these, or get them into your account and roll the stops forward, we call this. So this is, again, at, the, at this point, if you didn't see this, at this moment you should now be saying, okay, now I get it. Take care, David. Now I get it. It doesn't matter that you see this, but at this point, you should be alerted that the sellers won this battle. Yes, the buyers, they sold to buy. The buyers were able to make some money, but they've stepped out of the way at this point. Maybe they became sellers. But the sellers won this battle, and they're in control. That is the key. Do I take into account psychological levels 127, 126? Uh, you know, I don't, and the reason why is because if you actually do statistics on them, they're 50-50. They're noise. There's plenty of times when, you know, and I'll tell you what, I'm as, I'm as uh, uh, paranoid or I don't know what the word is. You know, I, I generally don't put profit orders at 127 even or, or sell orders at 127 even. I'll do it at 127.99 or 126.99 or something like that. I mean, I'll put my profit order if I'm uh, short at 127.01 instead of even. But do they mean anything? No, it's, it's madness. It's, it's absolutely meaningless. Okay, well, well, Raj, if it's ahead, we'll get there. Just slow down. What's the position of the market? As a whale, do you determine position then and then try and run to stops to capture profit, Reggie? That's a good question. Well, if it's vulnerable, in this case, we know people were leaning. Let's go back. People are leaning on this line. Well, I guess I don't have this the best look I've got. People have fallen asleep at this point. And you can see the volatility dying. Volatility is a clear, when it dies like that, it's a clear sign that the market is ripe for stops to be run. Well, where are the closest stops? The closest stops are underneath these lows. So, as a whale, push. Just absolutely push. I think I learned in the last webinar the time to draw uh, uh, a fork is when previous lows have been taken out. I believe you mentioned that. Yes, okay. So strictly speaking, shouldn't one wait for one more to be taken out before drawing a fork? If you can, sure. You can wait until this moment happens if you want. But for me, this is the same information for me. Yes, you can. Have you ever seen a close-only chart, Hans? If I did a close-only chart, this is the only bar down here, so to speak. And actually, one of the best traders I know in the world, certainly one of the richest, trading his own money, uses close-only charts. He doesn't even use bar charts. It's too, it's too sloppy for him to bother. Trades nice and slow, makes lots of money. Why? Because he's patient and he sees things, sees things very clearly. Okay, if you've never seen a close-only chart, open up eSignal, or uh, I'm sure even, um, I'll bet even IB has it. Just look at the bar type and hit close only, and it'll just actually be a line that connects all the closes. And that gives you lots of information. This is only closed down here. Take a look. Very important. Decisions are made on the close. Two lows, Matt says two lows were taken out. And the gap counts as one, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, so if you... Tony just pulled one up. Yeah. If you've never looked at a close only chart, it might open your eyes. You might get a big surprise. I'm not telling you to chart use it. I'm not telling you that that's the answer for you. But I'll tell you what, it's an interesting way to look at the market. It works for some people. I don't use them. I use exactly what you're seeing. But one of my closest friends, I said, made a couple it's worth a couple bill. I'm just saying, 
all money that he made himself over uh, he's been trading 40 years as well and uh, he uses close only charts why no noise it's so easy to get turned around in the noise all right so let's see what else do we have for questions here um P5s and expanding pivots. I think that's a. I'll see if I can grab one. That might be a little bit advanced. But if I see one, I'll, I'll go ahead and grab one. I'm um, going back. Let's see. What was the clue of the gopings where we just talked about that? Um, send me the expanding pivot one privately. So if I skipped your question, just give me a. Can you point out the whale traits that would show us the personality of a particular whale? Um, I think I just, well, look. This is a, somebody really pushing the market. They're, they know the market's falling asleep. They're selling it. Why? They sell a couple billion to buy 20 or 30. If they get these traders to wake up, it's like hitting a beehive. They get these traders to wake up. The guys that are long and falling asleep and the people that are sheep, the people that sell breakouts or buy breakouts, that's the easiest money on the board. So if you wake these people up and they're long and they're tired of being long because it's not going up and you get the breakout sellers in there, you can sell $2 billion and wake up $20 billion worth of orders scoop up all of that, sell to, buy 20, end up $18 billion long, and prices up here, guess what happens? The people that sold down here start to buy from you. You know, if you only take out 60 pips out of the market, on that kind of money, it's a lot of money. That simple whale track. And this, a simple whale track. Buy it, sell it, to buy it. Right here. Now, if you went to a 20-minute, You'd see this clear, it probably look something like this. And later on, when we look at another one, you'll remember it's multiple bars. So if somebody's washing it in the dailies, in the 60s, it'll look like this. Take some time, go over it, and look at these areas carefully, and you'll see the types of signatures that are available. But usually they're very simple to see. You don't need to say, you know, for example, in any, I, I generally say in any time frame, my time frame is usually when I'm intraday trading, so U.S. markets, I generally don't play around in, in Asia. Um, I have buddies, whales that are, that are very good friends, and sometimes I play in Asia, but for the most part, I don't play in their waters because I don't want them to come play in my water. But you don't need to know that there's three, four, five in the U.S., three, four, five in Asia. Similar thing in, in the European time zone. You don't need to know their names. You don't need to know exactly what the tricks are. They're not that much different. There's only so many ways to do the same thing. What else do we have? Is Fibonacci any help? Um, Joe DiNapoli is one of my closest friends in the markets. Great trader, great educator. Um, the way I would use Fibonacci, if I use it at all, is to take a look at the 3A2 retracement and see when they break out these 3A2 guys because they're easy stops to run. And Joe and I, when we used to do live trading at, at play things like Traders Expo, we used to send, uh, we used to have runners and send notes with, with each other because we were doing live trading in different rooms. And uh, I'd say, hey, I just ran the fib, ran the order on the fib traders, and then he'd, he'd send some guy running back, hey, I just popped out the top end of a fork. You know, if we if, if it's easy to see the three eight two buyers, then it's easy to know where their stops are and to run them. So that's about the only reason I'm going to use it. See whether orders are clumping. Tim, would you avoid over would I avoid trading overnight? Me? Well, does anything work differently than with lower volatility? Okay, well, Mark, first of all, in foreign exchange, it's not lower volatility. Um, the reason why hedge fund guys use 240 charts, which is four hours per, is because you have New York or the North American time zone. And I live in Arizona, but it doesn't matter. It's still North America. We have the morning and the afternoon. Then we have Tokyo. We have the morning and the afternoon. Then we have London. We have the morning and the afternoon. And each of those money centers carry sets of orders. And then they have to pass them over to Asia. Then Asia has to pass them over to London. Then London passes them back to New York or Chicago. 
and then they get passed over again to Sydney um, or Tokyo or et cetera, and then back over to Geneva or London, et cetera. They get passed around the world. So the volatility, it really just depends on what's going on that day. And if you, let's say if you're trading the euro, it's always volatile. There's always, of course, areas where things get a little slow, but here's the key about holding things overnight. If you start to take a trade, and your intent is for this to be a day trade, then mark, put that in your trade plan. And you need to fill out a trade plan. If you guys don't have a trade plan, if you go to marketgeometry.com and click on free information on top, there's three um, Excel spreadsheets that you can fill out, and I think they're there in PDF as well. And uh, one of them is a trade plan that we pass out to everybody, people in mentoring. It's a great place for you to start. You should fill those out before you ever take a trade, ever. And one of the things you got to ask yourself is, is this a day trade? If it's a day trade, then at the end of your day, if your day is 4.30 in the afternoon, if that's your normal end of trading, you need to be out of this trade at the end of the day, period. If, instead, this is a longer-term trade, well, it doesn't bother me at all. Some of my trades last months. So it depends on why you got in the trade. But if I got in this trade, for example, in the morning, and I said, you know what, this is Tuesday, and I have four hours today for intraday trading, at the end of the four hours, I'm out, period. Done. Yeah, exactly right. The FX day doesn't end until 5 o'clock in New York or Chicago. That's right. Um, I'll get to the profit target. Hang on one second, Franz, as soon as I get there. One second. Um, will Forex respond the same as 6E? Sure, absolutely. It's, you know, it's the same. It's just got a little bit of interest rate rolled into it. It's exactly the same. They chart exactly the same. If you overlay them, there's no difference at all. <laughs> Can you explain why markets are not random? Did you ever get – hey, Reggie, this is a great question. Can you explain why markets are not random? Did you ever convince Uncle Milty of lack of randomness? He's talking about Milton Friedman. And Milton Friedman was my first, um, quote-unquote, mentor at the University of Chicago. He was my uh, – my student mentor, I was lucky enough, um, I had him for about two and a half years before he retired and then went on to do some educational and uh, research things at uh, the Hoover Institute at Stanford. But I had him for two and a half years. When I first had him in class, um, he was still talking about randomness in the markets. That's what they taught. That's what everybody taught. So being the, uh, well, as Dr. Andrews, Dr. Andrews used to he used to call me pansy, then he used to call me smartass, because unfortunately I, there's never a challenge that I won't take up. My son's like that, and sometimes it's, I can see why Andrews was annoyed with me. But uh, I, I came into class one day and saw Dr. Friedman. I said, I didn't call Milton at that point. I said, Dr. Friedman, i got to ask you a question. You keep telling me the markets are random. He said, that's right, that's what we teach. I, said, I took a folder out and I said, here, these are Xerox. We didn't call them uh, uh, just copies. That was the, you had to use a Xerox machine back then. Here's Xerox copies of four years of my trading records. I've been trading for a long, long time, even back then. I said, um, I've made each month is profitable. Um, would I be able to make money in a market that's random if the market was totally random? Can I look at those? I said, sure, you keep them. Um, and it's funny. At the same time, a good friend of mine, some and a, and a mentor. Amos Hostetter was doing the same thing with Paul Samuelson. Paul Samuelson was doing a research project on Amos Hostetter's um, trading, and that's why Commodities Corporation came about. And um, Dr. Freeman, a couple weeks later, came back and talked to me. We, and it was the last time I ever heard him say in class that markets were random. And now, of course, the University of Chicago not only has a trading lab, but they teach that the markets are not random and that market forces, of course, move the markets and that uh, – the way they began to explain it was that price at the margin, so price, where price and time are intersecting, price at the margin is what matters. Not price is random. It's price at the, where price is at its random. Price is right at the, at this marginal point. That's what's most important. And so, uh, yeah, I was able to convince them, and I, I think I was a good part of that, and I, I'm very proud about that. But I'll tell you what, it took a lot of, a lot of huevos to step up and uh, give them that packet, but I couldn't let it pass. Uh, I, did, I had to convince Burl Sprinkle as well, another Nobel Prize winner. Um, thank you so much, O.C. I really appreciate it, and I'll give them all your love. You take care. Um, is that like trading at the edges? Sure, exactly. Have I tried to automate this trading? Setlana, that you know what? I know lots of people want to do it. Um, I've done this in past seminars. I've talked about this. I don't want to take up too much of Cynthia's time, but I'll just tell you real quickly. 
Uh, Goldman Sachs spent $250 million and hired three of us to try and automate and threw the machine out the window. City went through, uh, took $25 million and hired people, including me, um, to do it, and then threw that computer out the window. Commodities Corporation tried to automate my work um, and quickly pulled the plug. It's, there's too much discretion in it. It's about 80% math and 20% art, and that 20% is just too much to overcome. Uh, Peter says it's hard to automate price action. Yeah, there's just there's there's too much. I I, I wish I wish it was. Believe me, I I'd, I'd love to automate it because then I just trade 24 hours while I slept. But uh, no, it's, it doesn't work. It grinds itself into dirt, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Machines just can't do any any art. Uh, well, at least not yet. I, I'll never say never. But uh, right now, that art that 20% is too much. So what else do we have? Uh, second profit target. That's what I was going to get to. Let me see if I can find that to you. So. We're zooming along now. If you can figure out how to sell with the whales, again, see if you can figure out how to get long here. If you're long, figure out why this is the correct profit target. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with taking your profit right here at prior lows, and you can see the multi-pivot line right here. Nothing wrong with that at all. But you definitely want to be gone and thinking about shorts at this point because the sellers want a major victory. They're not going to give it up. No, the effort, Svetlana, it was compl it's it's useless. Don't even buy. I'm gonna let me just save you time, coding time, energy, money. It's just not even worth it to try and do it. Artificial intelligence is an oxymoron. In this case, it is. It does a lot of interesting things, but it's just not worth it. Believe me. But you know, if you want to try it, let, keep me informed. But it's not it's not going to happen. I, I predict. That's just my prediction. Um, so anyway, as we're up in this area up here. You should be thinking about shorts because the sellers want a major victory and they're not going to give it up. If you get short, first logical profit. Why would this be a first logical profit target? Well, it's prior lows. There may be buy orders here. Now, it turns out it did pause. Then it came off the cliff. Well, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. And you wanted to get the first one or second one. Hang on. Um, hang on. I'm slow, but I'll get to it. Oh, I just lost all my questions. What did I do, Cynthia? Where's my questions? There we go. Sorry about that. Sheesh. Anyway, I lost that one question. I'm not going to do that again because then I dropped everything. So here we go. Here's my first target right here, and it's off of prior lows. Then I have a warning line. This, this meeting line was so important to me, I just put in the first warning line. And I'm coming back down to test it on what we call a switchback. Nothing more exciting than that. As I said, I think if you're short, there's no reason to short this this far down into the trade. There's really no reason. I think you need to be out in this area. If you get this much, that's great. And you can do it by trailing a stop above this coil. And then when this becomes an energy coil, of course, you can put a stop right above that. That's fine. But, but this is a lot to bite off, let me just tell you. Uh, when you're looking to get short, what's your entry criteria? Price pattern, reversal bar. Brian, here's my entry criteria. Right here. I don't need anything more than this, as Shane would say. Fact. There aren't that many times that you have facts in front of you. This time I have facts right in front of me. If the risk reward and the money manager stacks up, this is a no-brainer. I don't even need to draw on the median line. You can draw one in, and it's right here. See if you can draw it in. But I have facts. That's all I need. I know the sellers are going to step up. Um, Peter says, I trade Aussie U.S. dollar a lot, and the range is repeat. Is it part of target pinpointing for you? Sure. I, I love the Aussie, Peter. I have a blast trading the Aussie. And I'll tell you what, when I day trade, when I intraday trade, I love trading the Aussie. That's why. Because there's always something going on, even if it's a nice, fat, wide range. In this chart, don't you see a change in behavior to the upside? Why well, think shorts up there? Raj, let me just say it again. Fact. There's only a couple facts on this chart, and here's the most important one right here. You have to get used to dealing with facts. I don't see a change in behavior. It ain't there. Are wash and rinses always done by whales? Um, sometimes enough orders built up that, you know, if just enough tips over on one side that they'll push it. But generally, generally, it's somebody that reads the market well enough can push it over. You know, sometimes they can't. 
uh, take advantage of it, it happens too fast. But generally, there's somebody taking advantage of it. If you know they're going to step up that at that consolidation, why even have a stop that far up above the swing high, Jack says? That's a good question, Jack, because what if a whale decides to get cute and pushes, and there are some stops right up here above this little area here, and it runs a little bit farther than you think. So you're right, and you use a cheap stop, and now price is down here. Because let's look what happens. Uh, not so easy to get short. Don't use cheap stops. That's the quickest way to empty your account, trust me. Test and retest counts on price coming back to the lower median line or upper median line. Why can't we assume price will retest? Well, sometimes it does. In this case, it didn't, did it? When I have fact working for me, I don't really need to. If it, Reggie, if it makes you happy, look, there was a nice test and retest up in here, and you could have definitely used it. If you just missed one, that's fine. If you caught this one, the test and retest, and the test and retest really helped you on the entry, then by all means use test and retest. Use the tools that work the best for you, period. Uh, oh, my God. I would never look at, if you, that says wide moving averages, I would never look at them not anywhere, not anyhow, not happening. Why? Those are lagging indicators. This is a leading indicator. So are facts. I only deal in leading indicators. Sorry. I don't do uh, squiggly lines and I don't do anything other than facts and leading indicators. All the zones begin with gap. Why is that so? Well, they don't always do it. Just Svetlana and this one, they just, this one is just, they happen to be good attractors. Uh, sometimes that's the case. A lot of times it'll be um, a multi pivot line like. Let's see if I can pick one out. How about right here? If I draw right through here. Sometimes this will be it. But in this particular case, you're right. It happened to clump around zone, uh, around gaps. But it doesn't always. You know what? Uh, there's been a lot of news lately. And uh, as much as I make fun of uh, my buddy Ben and some of the other people, I call them nitwit bars. But, you know, especially if they do it on the opening or the, if people digested news over the weekend, Obama opened his mouth or Romney opened his mouth or, um, you know, uh, the German Central Bank opened their mouth, et cetera, et cetera. You know, if you get that stuff building up over the weekend and then it gaps open, those become important areas. And there's been a lot of that going on. We have an election coming up pretty soon. So right now maybe we're a little sensitive over the weekends. But in general, doesn't necessarily not the case, Vailana. But it's a good observation. Um, what's the A pivot for the fork median line shift? Uh, well, it would be this high. All they did was this high, and I used alternate pivots further down. How, do, how can you tell? Well, it's, it's a little hard to tell, but you would just draw, connect the A to the C, and you can see the slope right there. So hopefully you guys are, get, are getting some interesting things. We're running low on questions here, I think. And it's been a long, long morning for Cynthia, especially with, every, with all the technology stuff. Um, I, I want to thank you guys all so much for taking time. It's been a long time for all of you, and you, everybody stayed. Thank you so much. Cynthia, you there? Yes, I am, Tim, and I'm going to stop the recording right now, but I do want